G'day guys, how you going? I'm Isky. Welcome to my YouTube video. And today I thought I'd quickly make a video about how to replace a door on a Fisher & Paykel dryer the correct way. Now, if you've been following my channel, I only started it this year. Um, basically, um, I've already made this video. I'm not really happy with the video because there's an easier way to do it than how I did it in the video. Now, in my video, what I actually did was I grabbed the dryer and I put it on the back and I took the door off and I did it that way. So I'm gonna show you an even easier way, a quicker way, how to do this. And um, listen, I'll show you the problem. <laughs> you, you would think basically replacing a door on one of these is easy. Let me just open this. Can you see how, basically if you have a look here, you can see there's two screws. There's one up the top here and one down here. Now you'd think that that you just take those two off and then the door would come off. But no, that these two screws is basically holding this cover. That's just a cover for what's underneath there. So basically, let's actually take that off first. Qu quickly take those two screws out. Oops. <laughs> I went the wrong way and I broke the cover. That's okay, because I'm throwing this dryer out. I'm throwing everything out. So I thought I'd quickly make this video before I threw it out. All right, let's have a bit of a closer look now. Uh, here we go. I'll just get this light happening. Okay, now that we've got that cover off, can you see these two screws here? There's one screw there, and then there's one screw just here. Now, the problem with the Fisher & Paykel dryers, I hate the design. It's just the worst dryer design ever made, I think. Um, although they're not bad, the dryers themselves aren't too bad. Um, but from a service kind of perspective, bad design. But um, basically, can you see here? Now, you would think, basically, these are like, they're not hinges, but they're little posts. If you take this out, there's a little post here. There's a hole in the door, and the door sits on that post, and that's how it kind of hinges back and forth. So naturally, naturally you would think that you just take that out and you take that out, pull the door off, stick another one on. But no, no, and this is where the bad design part, this is just one of the bad design parts of this dryer. Um, I'll show you what happens. Basically, this there's a plate. There is a big metal plate that sits behind this wall here, and that is what these screws are screwed into. But the thing is, that plate isn't held on by anything but these screws. So once you take those screws out, the plate drops down. Let me show you. See this dryer? Well, I've removed the bowl, just so you can get a good look. So can you see that plate there? In fact, just here and just here are those screws that are holding it on. Nothing else is actually holding that plate up. It's just terrible, so most people don't know that. So once you actually undo those screws, that entire plate falls down. It falls down and it falls on this. This is the fan. It falls on the fan and you cannot put it up without, you cannot put it back up without taking the top off your dryer, taking the bowl out of your dryer, by the way. This is what the dryer looks like with the back off. You basically have to undo everything. All of those wires, you have to pull the bowl out. It is a nightmare. And for most people, you may as well throw the dryer away. So <laughs> it's a big job. But now that you guys know, now that I've actually told you, I will show you the correct way to do it. So basically, it's a very easy thing to change. You know, I've got a, I've got a lid, I've got a door here. Not that I need another door, but you can see here I've got this door. You can see just there. Well, I don't know if you can see that. Let me get that light. Can you see that little hole there? That's basically where those posts, where those screws slot into. What I'm going to show you now is how to do it. So basically, when you want to replace this door, the whole idea is not to take both of these screws out at the same time. What I like to do is maybe just do the, the bottom one. Let's take this bottom screw out. There you go. <laughs> and there goes the there goes the um the door. So I'm just gonna throw that over there. But the cool part is this one up the top is still 
in place and that is actually still holding it is still holding this metal plate in place can you see that in fact let's try something let's try something um, I am going to just set you up here I'm going to grab another camera let's take this camera and let us just point it at that plate let me show you what happens if I was to remove that last screw. Did it fall down? Normally it falls down. Yeah, well, it's, you, I don't think you saw it, but uh, these wires were kind of holding it. Normally you hear it go clunk, but you can see that it's just sitting freely. It just, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So. Basically, let me put that screw back in there. So if that was to fall down, like I said, you have to take the bowl out, take the top off because you literally, where did I put that thing? Um, I think that was it here. Now, all right, I have to put that back there. Now I have to basically grab this plate. Right, now we're back in business we're back in business now so there you go you can't you cannot you cannot remove both of these kind of hinge points at the same time otherwise that plate basically falls off all right let me just move you closer I think so now all you need to do is grab your new door um, here we go just put it on like that grab that other first one that you took off or the only one that you took off and um, we put that on like that there you go oops might actually be easier for most people to do this with um with a second person to hold that that door Let's just try and do it ourselves. There you go. That's it. It's simple. It is really easy thing to do unless, unless you take that off as well as that one off at the same time, which most people do. It is. It's a, it's a common thing. Most people will take both of those screws out because that's it's just natural, right? But um, no, you don't have to do that. Once that's there, and then you can get this other part that I've already stuffed. <laughs> Remember I broke it. And you can kind of screw that one back up there and down the bottom as well. And you've got your dryer back. But um, there you go. But um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, you know, people are probably asking, well, why do you need to, um? replace a door on these dryers. Well, the reason is Fisher and Paykel doors on Fisher and Paykel dryers are some of the worst doors. Look at this, look how flimsy they are. They're just pieces of crap. They're lightweight. They're made out of kind of very flexible, lightweight uh, plastics. And what happens is after the years have gone by and there's been all this heat generated from these dryers, well, this plastic warps and it moves and um, yeah, it, it sucks. Uh, the biggest reason though, I reckon, would be, can you see this little dicky bit here? This little rod, this plastic part there? Well, when you close your dryer, that is designed to go into this slot here. And inside there is your kill switch. So that is how the dryer knows. Once you close the door, I'm not gonna do it right now, but um, Basically, once your dryer is turning over and working, blah, 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 you know, you can actually open the door straight away. You don't have to actually pause the machine. You can actually just open the door and that releases that switch, which stops the dryer from turning. And then you can throw in your, your extra undies or whatever, close the door, hit play, and you're off and running again. But um, yeah, these tabs here, these dicky bits, they break off all the time. So a lot of people, like to buy themselves new doors or used doors on eBay and um, kind of get their dryer back into action. 
But yeah, just remember that guys, it's a, it's a really, it's a bit of golden information. If you ever want to replace your, your, your dryer door, um, definitely do not remove that screw as well as that screw at the same time. Otherwise you're in a world of hurt. Like I said, you have to pull out the entire bowl. Um, it's a major job otherwise, it is a major job. Have a look at some of the comments on my other video that I released. I had people who had, you know, <laughs> were saying, oh, I wish we saw this video before you, before we tried it because that's exactly what happened to us. But um, there you go. So yeah, all right, that's it guys. I'm gonna call it, that's a nice short one for us. Um, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Um, hey, listen, just before I go, I might just touch on something that I was just talking about in a bit more detail, um, because it's worth a mention. I did go over this a bit more in my other video, um, and that is um, how I was just talking about this dicky bit here and how these snap off all the time. Um, and that's probably the main reason people will actually get a new door. Well, you don't have to do that. This is, the, this is a dodgy method. This is the dodgy method. If you grab yourself a bit of paper, it's a bit of a post-it note, you just fold it down. Now, if you get that bit of paper, you can literally stick that in there, um, cut it back so that that's nice and flush, just so that the switch that's inside is being pushed by something, this bit of paper. I'll show you what the switch looks like down here. This is basically what the switch on the other side of here looks like. You can see there, and basically all that paper is doing, all this shaft here is doing is pushing on this metal lever, and you can see it's pushing on that switch. So that's a dodgy method. <laughs> that's a dodgy method if you didn't want to buy an entire door. Just remember that if the dryer was going and you were to open the door normally the dryer would stop automatically because that switch is released but because this is always in there well the dryer is still going to go even with this door open um, so yeah that's why it's dodgy but I mean it'll get you through some trying times that's for sure um, but uh, listen the other thing I mentioned before how these are flimsy and pieces of crap well, what happens um, is a lot of people will be using their dryer and all of a sudden they can't use their dryer. It just won't go when you press play. And the reason being is, remember I said that these doors get really, um, they go all warpy because they're really lightweight and the heat of the dryer over the years kind of bends them and flex them. Basically what's happening is it does bend them and it pushes them kind of bends this door back that way and that's enough for this little lever, this little um, shaft here to kind of break contact with that switch. Um, so the easiest thing to do, you don't actually have to get a door, but the easiest thing to do is just get your arm hands like this, twist it, just twist it back. That's the easiest, I'm always doing that to fix dryers. And then you can close it and it makes contact with that, um, with that um, switch once more. But uh, there you go, guys. That's it. I'll kill this video. We'll finish it now. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.